Hello, this is the Digital Loop, season four, episode eight. Episode eight, Ivan, how are you? Very well, Paul. Very, very happy to... Episode eight, I mean, time goes fast. We're season three, episode eight, that's really cool. Season four. 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 Oh, my it's, God. You're, you're, you're so 2015, man. So um, <laughs> the, big, the big thing that happened last week, it's like every single year, it's Mobile World Congress. Neither Ivan or myself were there. Uh, I've... I used to go, and for the first year, I've uh, not gone. All my friends are very unhappy that I haven't been, but uh, we're still going to cover because a lot of stuff has been going on. Of course, when you talk about our Congress, you have all the new phones, so all the lots of hardware. So Samsung has released these new Galaxy phones. Uh, there were Sony that has released also new phones. They have also released, you know, the Amazon Echo, that thing when you can talk to it, it stays in your room. They, they're apparently working on something similar, so a competition of this, that Amazon Echo. LG has been releasing a phone that you can, uh, apparently you can build stuff upon it. It's a bit of modular phone. So you have all these things that have been going on. There's like so many. We're not, of course, going to mention them all because there's way too many. And the news is still filtering out. You have, you just Google and um, Mobile World Congress 2016, you'll find out the info. The big picture that made a lot of people that it was shared all the time on Facebook was by Mark Zuckerberg. Of course, he didn't take it. It's a it's a picture you probably know uh, already. Uh, it was during a Samsung events. Uh, all the crowd, all the audience, had a VR headset. They were introducing a, a VR headsets. And whilst they were all playing at it, Mark Zuckerberg, without anybody knowing, was walking to the stage. And of course, when people would remove their headsets, they would see Mark Zuckerberg and everybody gone crazy like he's a rock star. But the funny bit is that picture of him walking <laughs> next to all these guys with uh, VR headsets. And that looked like a bit of a warning of the future or something, don't you think? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, this is. The, I, I thought it was hilarious, and it's really, really interesting to think about. Uh, is, is this our future? That yes, I mean, virtual reality and these headsets, and of course, the possibilities of of you know putting this headset in front of you, and virtually you are transported to different locations, and you can uh, have different virtual uh, experiences, and 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 all this, which sounds really, really cool. Uh, it's interesting to think about if if. You know, this is this our future that we're gonna be too busy with having something in front of our eyes, and we're gonna miss the things that are happening right here and now. You know, this is probably the closest many of these individuals will ever get to somebody like Mark Zuckerberg, and they missed it. They missed it because they had a you know a, a screen on their face, <laughs> and, and 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 I just I just like oh my god, I will be so upset and disappointed of missing something like this just because I have something on my face. Uh, but I don't know, maybe this is the direction where we're going, who knows? Yeah, so that was for the release of the Samsung Gear VR. I mean, we invited already several times, Dean Johnson, who is our friend, uh, talks about VR all the time. We should invite him once to talk about that again. Uh, other companies also released the, the VR stuff. There was the HTC Vive, which is also another uh, play on the headset. So it, it seems that, a lot of companies are, are putting, of course, money into that. It's Nothing is already really there. I mean, we can have some of the VR headsets. The content is still very early to know if it's going to be something that is going to change the world or not. Uh, I think there's also a company, I have to look the name, Avigant Glyph. So it's a, it's a headset uh, that you have like a normal, uh, sorry, a normal headphones uh, that you would have these big fat headphones. Like for those who are watching the show, you can see one on my head. The thing is, the bit that usually goes on your on your the tip of your the top of your head, you can put it in front of your eyes, and it becomes it's a medium. They, they call it medium wear, so it's not a fully headset, but it's kind of a, a play. It could be some an introduction to some kind of augmented reality. So a lot of players are putting money. They were they were also I think it was Epson. You know, the Epson is known for the printers. They released a, a version of like Google Glass as well. So. A lot of a, a lot of companies are putting bets on these technologies. There was actually an article, and I loved it. It says um, MW, MWC 16 is really finding mobile to include everything. It is a bit like what it looks like. It's like now we have everything at Mobile Congress. But so, do you think? I mean, now it's very early, but do you think that VR is poised to become as big as people think it will? Uh, I think that this is one of be one of those things that. Uh, maybe I, I don't think that it's going to be next year, in a couple of years, but probably five years from now, it's going to be as normal as having a, a smartphone. 
Uh, I mean, I remember 2007 when the iPhone came out, when you first saw this amazing piece of technology that it didn't have a keyboard, but actually had a screen and piece of glass and you touch it and things happen. Back then it was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Today, having a smartphone is, 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 is you know, nothing special. Let's put it that way. Uh, I, I have the, the impression that this is something that could be like that. I'm not sure when, but there is an opportunity here that probably, you know, let's say five years from now, having your virtual reality set is going to be like having a, a, a maybe a tablet, maybe not a smartphone, but maybe having a tablet. That same thing, having an iPad, having a, a, a tablet was a big deal when they came out. Today, it's normal. Maybe maybe it's not going to be something groundbreaking, but there is something that is going to be more, you know, democratized, and more people are going to. It's going to be normal to go for a meeting, and instead of you know sitting down in front of your laptop with a little camera, it's going to be normal behavior to you know put the thing on your eyes and you know talk with John who is sitting down <laughs> you know somewhere else. So uh, uh, yeah, so actually, so Facebook obviously believes in that because they've uh, they've bought Oculus. That is finally going to be released uh, soon. Uh, there was they also uh, just announced a social uh, uh, VR team. Uh, I don't remember the yeah. name, social VR team or something. So they're gonna social look at, VR team. Yeah, at the solutions that what could uh, the Facebook existing Facebook content and future Facebook content be available on a virtual reality headsets and other a place like that. Uh, it has to be. It has to be. Uh, it's an aparte, but I want to say that all the Oculus will be released next year it requires a pc that is at least a thousand dollars so it's not a, a very mass market thing yet because you need a lot of power to being able to use it as far as the content goes obviously the first thing we think about is uh, uh gaming because gaming is clearly the big one for for vr but also, like you said, for work, I mean, we know that Microsoft is working on the, the HoloLens, you know, that kind of thing where you can suddenly be inside of a working environment and, you know, play with office, real life or whatever. So maybe it's something that would, that would play. I, I agree with you as far as the, um, the timeline goes. It's maybe not as, as, as quick as we think, but I think it's still important. The other, the other thing, maybe you follow as well, Robert Scoble. Robert Scoble went all crazy about a, a startup which is called uh, Meta, and they had uh, they did a demonstration of their technology, which is not VR, which is AR, which is augmented reality. So basically, you see the world in front of you, and you have added information on top of it. It's a bit. If you think about Meta, just look at Iron Man, the way he sees the world with all these fancy graphics on top of of, of the views he's seeing. This is exactly what Meta uh, promises. They've actually even done the, the, the demo at TED, the big event. So it looks like something is going on. I don't know. Of course, medical is another way where it will be probably very influential. But coming back to Mobile World Congress, it shows that all the companies now, the mobile, like you entered very, uh, very clearly at, mobile is now part of our life. How, where do we go from there? What do we add on top? You have, of course, we've talked in this show about messaging of all the software, the OTT software that comes on top, but where do we go in terms of hardware? And it seems that the bet is a lot on, of course, uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality. So what else did you see? Uh, at, was it like a piece of technology you absolutely want to have? Ivan, did you saw there like, I want to buy that today? Was it something there that uh, attracted you? Uh, no, I mean, actually what I think is, what, what really got me thinking more about this is that, yes, when we started to talk about all these wearables and we start talking about all these uh, uh, connected devices, uh, it's important to understand that in order to make this connectivity and all this a reality, there is a need to upgrade to continue developing the, the networks. Uh, and this is something that we were talking about, the fact that there is this uh, uh, global race to develop the, the, the 5G uh, networks. Absolutely, yeah. Networks. So if you want to be able to connect all these devices and you really want to have uh, the, 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 the so-called Internet of Things uh, um, platform across all your devices and across not even your, your devices but every device you really need to have a, a more uh, a stronger and more powerful network and that's 5g which is interesting you know looking at, at the reports uh, a lot of people were talking about 5g networks at, at the congress it's about you know when or which is the first country that is going to be able to, to deliver it they are talking about there were talks about uh probably by 2020 
that's when they are thinking that it's going to be accessible for, for most of the people. But there is an interesting element that in 2018, South Korea is organizing the Winter Olympics. And, and as far as uh, I can tell, uh, there is plans to start testing 5G networks by 2018. Yeah, uh, and actually, and, and actually Tokyo is organizing the Summer Olympics just two years later in 2020. And they also are betting on 5G uh, for that. So that it could be these two countries could be the first one with a wider adoption of, of 5G networks. Yes. So, sorry, go on, go on. Yeah, no, but, but this is what is really interesting because on the one hand, yes, it's really exciting when you start talking about connectivity and Internet of Things and devices and wearables and everything. Uh, but sometimes you might have the situation that you have a really, really cool device with a lot of capabilities that you simply cannot use because you lack the, the, the broadband or you lack the power. Um, and and it's, it's funny when you think about it, I remember, you know, based on your, on your, on your work experience and your career, the fact that I remember having this conversation with you that you built a, 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 a mobile, a startup focused on mobile in, in the Philippines in the 90s, which was really revolutionary and it was, it had the potential to, you know, the amazing things but you lack the infrastructure. The mobile infrastructure back then was not par to your ideas and to your what you were creating. So this is exactly what I think that this is, we, we are at this stage in which the possibilities are endless, yet we are not able to reach them yet because the infrastructure is not there yet. Yeah. And what I find really interesting is that this is started to become, you know, something more concrete, the 5G networks, are on the horizon and now it's just a question of are we, how fast how quickly are we going to get there i, I would say, I would say it's, it's not only how quickly are we going to get there because of course it is but it's not the only question because uh, so the startup was in europe and the philippines but yeah you're right there was no customers because that was too early but the point is it's so it's not a, the broadband question that you asked first is clearly about not only that we want to have faster access to stuff, it's also because more and more stuff is going through that, of course, we uh, content heavy. We just talked about VR and AR. These require much more uh, broadband to actually transmit data over wherever you are with your VR headsets. Maybe in a room with Mark Zuckerberg, you don't see, is just around the corner, but you need more. That. And then what do you th when we talk about all these technologies we've been talking in this uh, show, The Digital Loop, the Internet of Things, all this stuff, they will require connectivity and they will all go through the same funnels, which are the networks or the, the Celco networks. So and that creates a glut. So it's not only about the speed at which you want the information, which obviously will become very demanding. It's about simply the availability of broadband. Even when I was, I was, I was in, in Tokyo very recently, uh, Tokyo's speeds, uh, 4G speeds are notoriously very fast, much faster than when you see the same 4G on your phone in other countries. Probably, I mean, South Korea is very close to it, probably even better. I mean, that's not the, the, the question today. But the thing is, there are places in Tokyo themselves that you see the network is struggling and what they do, uh, what the operators do, they actually uh, add some Wi-Fi capability in these places so you can actually jump on the Wi-Fi instead of having to rely. So meaning they already, uh, we already have, are eating some type of wall at some, at some bits. The big problem is that when we uh, started to get 4G, and I know that for some countries it's still not a 4G, but when we got there, we sold, we auctioned, and I say we, most of the country auctioned the licenses to the telecom operators. And telecom operators were like so happy to put a lot, a lot, a lot of money to buy the rights to have these, uh, these frequencies to be able to give that to the customer. The big difference today is that these telco operators who were the big behemoth and big, huge companies making a lot of profits, they are still huge, but they don't make as much profit. So for them, they're becoming, you know, data pipes. So for them, why would they this time around invest billions of dollars in not only upgrading the infrastructure, but simply also buying the rights to have it? And that's a big question that not a lot of governments have actually answered today. They don't know who is going to, is it Facebook and Google? We're going to, you know, we know that Google is, is building Google Fiber in the US. It's just being released in San Francisco. Will be these type of companies that will set up the networks of tomorrow? That's a big question because the telcos are not, now I'm not saying they're not interested, but regarding what kind of revenues they're making today, like, mm, yeah, what would you spend that much money into? So we will have it, of course, because as a sense of history, but when, I don't know, because not only because of the technical abilities, but will 
somebody put the money in this in who yeah plus also this, there is the question of how uh, what are the capabilities what are the telco companies able what are the, what are they able to do in this uh, um, moment where a lot of these companies are starting to create their own solutions to go over the telecom uh, i had a conversation yesterday with a, an executive from orange and he was talking about that at the mobile world congress uh, he found out about um, I, I, and i'm not going to go that much into details because it's just a conversation that i had but that android is planning to uh, you know, when you when you make a phone call through with an Android device, in the next couple of months, there is going to be the situation that is not going to go through, let's say, the phone lines or the phone frequencies, but it's going to go through the internet. So basically, you know, when you make a phone call using an Android device to an Android device, you are using the internet, kind of like the same when you are sending SMS with 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 uh, with uh, uh, with Apple with uh, iPhones, but it's the same thing with with phone calls. So all of a sudden, you know, the role of the the telephone operator is just becoming a, a data provider, and that's it. Yeah, actually, uh, you can already on um, uh, on Apple on iPhone there is a possibility to do Wi-Fi calls. So if the operator allows you, so it's a two so two thing. It's sometimes the operator prefers you using the Wi-Fi because it alleviates their uh, their network because you're on a Wi-Fi, let's say a broadband Wi-Fi. But so it's already there, like you say. Also, when you travel to emerging countries, when I say to someone here in the UK, for instance, can you WhatsApp me? It means send me a message in WhatsApp. If I say, can you WhatsApp me in many other countries, in emerging countries, I've seen that in the Middle East, I think that is Southeast Asia, people call you there. Uh, so it's... People are already moved away from whether when, when they call because we know that calls are being less and less used anyway. But when they do call, they actually use WhatsApp or other to call Viber and all the others Viber. That, are, that are even Facebook allows you to, to call each other or over sound bites you can record your voice. Meaning that data is crucial, but how do you monetize that as a, as a, as a, as a, exactly? But 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 the question is: Is this still kind of like an option? And, yeah, uh, of course, you're right, you're right. What, what this executive was saying is that we are going in the direction that is, is not an option, but actually this might turn to be, you know, the rule that, yeah. you know, and the consumer doesn't care. I mean, in a way, when you make a phone call, of course, if you're using a different data plans and you're, 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 you're being careful about, you know, your, your, your packages or something, then, then yes, you know, you, you think about, okay, maybe I call, maybe I send out, maybe I use Viber, maybe I use WhatsApp. But we are going in that direction that is going to be seamless. That you know, you make a phone call. Are you using the internet? Are you using uh, uh, you know the, the the network? Who cares? I'm just need to make a phone call. Yeah, you just uh, want it to. You just, want, you just want it to work, which actually stresses the point that all the technologies we're talking about, maybe not the entertainment technologies. That's us being demanding. We want to have a connectivity like Snappy. I want the information now. I want you know when I like you have on Facebook, you have you know these um, a little uh, thunderstorm whatever sign means that the article is instant. You have the same now being rolled out on Google, so you want instantaneously. But some of the technologies we've been talking about, like driver driverless cars or simply connected cars, rely on having an always on network. I mean, it's uh, it's almost like a safety thing. So. 5G will allow that, like this seamless, immediate response of the network. I mean, it's actually needed for that kind of innovation because if the car does, I mean, they will have, of course, backup systems. I'm not saying it's dangerous, but the, all these technologies rely on having, a, con, a, a the, you know, the age of context, which we talked about last year. You want and you need to have always on internet, which is extremely fast, but uh, uh, with a lag as well. You know, the time that actually the information comes, 5G promises like this lag to be extremely tiny. So you won't see, the, the internet will follow you around anywhere, but that's, it's not only nice for us and to being able to play with Google Hangouts like we do that, I cannot imagine how our Google Hangouts will look like in 2020, but simply because all the technologies that we are so fascinated with when we looked at Mobile World Congress or anywhere else will require this kind of instant on demand, always on type of internet. So it's it's an almost like a mandate. Who's going to build it? That's a big question. Well, I'm very curious to see if Facebook or Google or even Apple will end up putting money in actually establishing these networks themselves because they know that in order for them to sell more either services or hardware, they will need faster and reliable networks. They are very interesting uh, 
bits to see in the future. Yeah, so interesting, interesting times. And uh, I guess I guess with uh, this, we can start wrapping it up. Um, of course, if you if you would like to know more about the Digital Loop, we invite you to come to our website, thedigitalloop.co. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, Paul, where where people can find you because you know you put a lot of really interesting content. Maybe they want to follow you directly. <laughs> yeah, I'm my last name, so it's always hard to find. Uh, basically, if you go on the Digital Loop uh, at Digital Loop on Twitter, uh, you will find both Ivan and my uh, user handles on Twitter, and you'll be able to follow us uh, both there. Uh, we also are both obviously on Facebook. You can follow our profiles on Facebook. I, I think the easiest way is to go to the digitalloop.co if you like to go on the internet. If you just want to go on Twitter or Facebook, you just look for our names. We're always at the top of the list because we're quite active. We both share content uh, that is, uh, I think, pretty interesting. I, I hope so. Uh, so uh, please tell us if it's not. Uh, so please follow us there. Uh, and uh, well, I see you next time. I don't know when because I, again, I promised myself not to say it was next week because I know that next week for me won't I won't be. Uh, in London, I will be traveling. But next, next week, time, next time for more exciting news from uh, this uh, world that keeps changing that we're so fascinated with. In the meantime, I'm going to go see what kind of phone I'm going to buy from Mobile Congress. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>